lot more expensive. God damn it. <laughs> Started putting things away and realized I didn't really talk about this. So, know how much you can see here in the dark. Yep, yep, there you go, right there. Not a good time. Um, I'm gonna have to source, probably source another transmission, and then just send that one in to get built. And this will probably go in the trash. So, should. All right guys, next day, got the motor hanging here. We are going to take this clutch off, give it a nice little inspection here. I, I expect it to look pretty decent. There's, I put it on at like 54,000 and I'm just at like 8,000 or 80,500. So we'll rip this bad boy off, see how she looks, get that uh, spacer plate out of there. And then uh, I gotta match up some hardware and go to the hardware store to uh, get this thing mounted on the engine stand. And then tomorrow, we're going to crack that transmission in, in half. That'll be a different video, the next video. We're, um, since there's a hole in it, I got a buddy who's, who says he has a, a spare front case for it. But we'll see when that comes in and we'll have to send this. We'll talk more about that in the next video. Let's get this clutch off. All right, got all the hardware off and dropped the washer down in there. But let's see, there's the washer. Like it's definitely had some heat to it, that's for sure. Clutch disc. Not too bad, I guess. Definitely the center's got some color to it. Lay that down. Get this pressure plate off too. Let's try and get a decent angle for you guys here, yes. There you go, there's that side. The other side, and then hit the pressure plate. Okay. All right, pressure plate came right off. Just gave her a spray. I do see a little bit of oil back here. Um, I don't think it was actually leaking or anything. It might have been like residual from when we did it, or because I was like spraying down like the block behind this and there's like oil and junk all over that it might have just made its way down but I'm gonna keep an eye clean it up see if I don't think it would leak just sitting here but at least keep an eye because I'd rather I guess well, I'm probably removing the crank anyways it's gonna have to get replaced I didn't even think about it but then I bet uh definitely definitely pretty look at all right now after multiple trips to the hardware store and configuring this dang thing multiple times so if you guys are going to pull your motor like screenshot this you can see the way the slots are the slots are up top or the diagonal cut ones see and the lines it took forever and we had to get longer bolts to fit you know this is where the trans would normally mount so you can get bolts to go through and uh yeah there you go now we got to figure out a way because this hits right there and this is the distance between the two I don't know how we're going to do it yet. Well, after a lot of uh, maneuvering, maneuvering to <laughs> say the least, we should have had this out. I should have had this out. Uh, one more notch. You can't even see it here. Anyway, so it didn't go out far enough, and we had to, like, put this mounting bracket on this while it was still on the chains, and then lift this whole red thing up onto it, and then lower it down all sketchy and play with legs and stuff. It was not a good time. Kind of glad I forgot to record it because you guys would have just been yelling at me in the comments. But motor's off. Trans, someone here. It's good. Tomorrow, pull apart the transmission, and then uh, we'll get to the motor eventually. I need to cover up the exhaust side here. I didn't see. I need a new gasket. I re I'm going to need a whole new turbo blanket anyway. But my safety wire is kind of crap because I was doing it blindly. I'll actually be able to fit this bolt in. I haven't ran that at all since I installed this turbo. I mean, it's good enough. The O-ring in there is super tight, and this kind of keeps it, but I haven't ran that. I never got a leak, but I did kind of crush my oil line. I need to get a new oil line. Anyway. Boom. All right, guys, one last look before we end the video here. We've got the AC out. Like I said, in the next video, we'll be deleting this assembly, getting... I'm not about to tilt that over and more coolant but 
We'll get the condenser off of there. We'll clean some stuff up. Um, and just go over some things and uh, take this trans part. I think actually the next video for y'all will definitely be taking the trans part. I'll save those for the one after that. We'll next video definitely. We'll be cleaning the outside a good bit and then just take the case in half and see what we can find. So, all right. So, um, this was all filmed like two weeks ago. So there's been like some updates and stuff. I just want to throw it in this video. Um, so I still I still know what exactly caused the trans to fail. So we still don't know that yet, but. The trans is on its way to shop that as we speak. Paul reached out to me and he said, I want to do a breakdown video on your transmission. Um, let me know if you're down. And I was like, hell yeah. So, uh, FX came picked up Tuesday. Uh, I don't know when it's going to be there, but hopefully, like, today's Sunday. So, like, Monday, Tuesday, and then they break it down and have the video out, like, next week sometime or something. So, uh, just be on the lookout for that. It's going to be really interesting because, you know, he's been a mechanic for, for forever. So... It'd be nice to see um, him pull that apart and actually be able to like, you know, give names of whatever parts are in there and see maybe he'll be able to tell what failed or whatever. I, I think it's going to be really cool. Like, uh, yeah, hopefully some of the transmission is still good. I reached out to FFE Racing and that's who I'm going to have build the trans, but it, they said if like my first gear shaft is broken, the cost of that new is pretty much the price of a used transmission. So if that's all messed up, then I'll probably have to buy a new trans and then send that to FFE. And they're gonna do dog gears three to six, wave track LSD, uh, shift forks, and I think fourth gear support or something like that. We're not changing the ratios or anything, but uh, along with that, like with the dog gears, um, my boy was telling me you don't really want a full face clutch. Um, you want it to be able to disengage quicker so I might go to like a, a six puck clutch or like a I don't think I want to go down to a four but maybe a six I'll have to reach out to South Bend see if they make one um, that'll still be suitable for autocross and track racing and then you know dig racing it just an all-around decent clutch is what I need I might just stick with the daily but we'll see that's just something I gotta think about and trying to not spend unnecessary money with how easy it is to pull, it's going to be easy to pull all the stuff out the front end now. Like, I wouldn't mind just pulling it to swap the disc or whatever, so, later in time. And, uh, the aux rad and the AC is completely gone now. Sold those to some guy who had, like, a front end accident or something. Came in clutch, because I was literally just going to throw them all away. I was going to throw all that stuff away. And I sold it to him, I made, like, 60 bucks off of it. Shipping was a lot, and I was going to throw it away anyway, but... So that's that. Seats should be being sold this weekend, hopefully. That'll be like a grand I'll be able to put towards the transmission. Um, we bought the engine internals already. Um, I'm not going to tell you what they are. You might be able to see them on my Instagram somewhere. Check it out. But uh, I was buying them from a friend who already had them like bought and ready to build his engine and he sold his car, got a truck. So I bought it's a, the whole kit. Basically, Everything to build a motor besides gaskets and bearings and like a timing chain kit, obviously. But um, yeah, so that's bought. <laughs> Car will be good for like a solid 800 wheel. So I mean, we're never ever going to see that. The most we'll probably see is maybe 600. If I swap turbos and port the head, and we are putting bigger pistons in, so that'll help with spool a little bit. And especially if we do do a port ahead, I might do the larger exhaust housing on the turbo. At the same time, I want to replace a bunch of hardware. I want to replace the direct injectors and uh, you know, obviously all the gaskets and all that. This stuff's going to add up quick. I need to buy all the hardware for the rear end still for all the Verkline stuff that came in, um, which you guys haven't seen yet. But uh, what else? There's a lot of stuff going on. I think this week is when I'm going to start um, taking out the rear end out of the car. The hatch should be here sooner than later. And FFP, the ones building the trans, they also make Lexan glass um, for the hatches. Or Lexan glass. They make Lexan for these hatches that look OEM. They have like the black bezel around it. And it, I think they actually do put like those lines to it to make it look like it still has heat. Um, yeah. So many things. A lot of things going on. It's going to take time. And uh, yeah, so just bear with me. But uh, 
questions, comments, concerns, drop down below. As soon as that shop did shop that video drops, it'll be pinned down in the comments. It'll be the very first comment there. Hit that link. Um, I might even do like a reaction video to me watching that, which I think would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, just stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in flip flop.